Hello, and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jest to you one page at a time. The book Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace, published originally 1996. It's a big, big book. Lots of, lots going on. Taking a while to get through it. About a third of, about, about a third of the way through it. So, this is page number 364. Let's go. Our women, though there is this one male veiled UHID guy that's an active white flagger, Tommy S or F, who years ago nodded out on a stuffed acrylic couch with a bottle of Remy and a lit tipperillo. The guy now wears UHID veils and a whole spectrum of silk turtlenecks and assorted hats and classy lambskin driving gloves. Gately's had the UHID and veil philosophy explained to him in passing a couple times, but still doesn't much get it. Seems like a gesture of shame and concealment, still, to him, the veil. Pat Montesian said there's been a few other UHIDs who've gone, who'd gone through Ennett House prior to the year of the dairy products from the American Heartland, which is when new resident Gately came wobbling in. But this Joel Van Dyne, who Gately feels has zero handle on yet as a person, or how serious she is about putting down substances and coming in to really get straight, this Joel is the first veiled resident Gately's had under him as a staffer. This Joel girl, there wasn't even on the there wasn't even on the two month waiting list for intake, got in overnight under some private arrangement with somebody on the house's board of directors, upscale Enfield guys into charity and directing. There'd been no intake interview with Pat at the house. The girl just showed up two days ago, right after supper. She'd been up at Br Brigham and Women's for five days after some sort of horrific OD-type situation. She uh, said to have included both defib paddles and priests. Ooh. She'd had real luggage and this, like, Chinese portable dressing screen thing with clouds and pop-eyed dragons that even folded lengthwise took both green and Paris Paris Carbo to lug upstairs. There'd been no talk of a humility job for her, and Pat's counseling the girl personally. Pat's got some sort of privately directed arrangement with the girl. Gately's already seen enough private type arrangements between certain staffers and residents to feel like it's maybe kind of a character defect of Ennett House. A girl from the Brookline Young People's Group over in a cheerleader skirt and slut, slut stockings is ignoring all the ashtrays and putting her extra-long gasper out on the bare tabletop two rows over as she laughs like a seal at something an acneed guy in a long camel hair coat he hadn't taken off and sockless leather dance shoes Gately's never seen at a meeting before, says. And he's got a hand... He's got hand... Uh, blah, blah, blah. And he's got his hand on hers as she grinds the gasper out. Something like putting a cigarette out against the wood grain plastic tabletop, which rag Gately can already see the ragged black burn divot that's formed, is something the rankness of which would never have struck him one way or the other. The rankness of which would uh, never have struck him one way or the other before, until Gately took on half the break down the hall and wipe down the tables job at Ferocious Francis G.'s suggestion. And now he feels sort of proprietary about the Providence tabletop. But it's not like he can go over and take anybody else's inventory and tell them how to behave. He settles for imagining the girl pinwheeling through the air toward a glass wall. When they say it sort of means like what you said was good for them, it helped them out somehow, he says. But plus now, also, I like saying it... Okay. Cats and Kittens, that was page 364. Yeah, so I will bid you adieu.